السلام uh, السلام عليكم hello uh, uh, my name is uh, Abdul Hadi Balbaki I'm an occupational therapist uh, today I want to speak about autism spectrum disorder and the role of occupational therapy in uh, uh, treating children under the spectrum Um, first, we have to speak about objective uh, autism overview, promote awareness of autistic features, sensory integration definition, benefit of early intervention in autism, the role of occupational therapy in autism, and family education and support. So these are objectives that uh, will go uh, during the presentation. First, uh, I want to define about our role as an occupational therapy. Uh, as an occupational therapist, we part of the medical uh, rehabilitation team, uh, physical therapy, speech therapy, and uh, occupational therapy. We work in different settings. We work in hospital setting, school setting, uh, early intervention, home care, uh, nursing home. So we work in various settings. And e each role of us for an, as an occupational therapist, we ha have different co goals for each um, uh, role as, as an occupational therapist. Um, but now we're talking about uh, autism, and I want to speak also like uh, the, uh, the definition of the American Occupational Therapy Association uh, assert that uh, occupational therapy services are grounded in the belief that persons with autism spectrum disorder are integral members of their families and communities and have the right to fully participate in educational, social, cultural, political, and economic life uh, of society. Basically, the, the, each one who is under the spectrum, they have the right to participate everything as anybody else in the society. And, and this is according to the American Occupational Therapy Association. Now, what is autism? Autism, it's a neurobehavioral disorder and it's, in a, li it's a lifelong uh, disorder that uh, stay with the children. The children will, uh, do, uh, will uh, improve. Doesn't mean you have autism, you don't improve or you don't participate in anything in life. Uh, it, it, it varies from one child to another. A developmental disability that affect how a person uh, communicate with relate to other people also affect how they make sense of the world around them. So it's basically like you know the, the way that children interact with the environment uh, is different, uh, and the way they relate to the, the, the environment is different according whatever they perceive the sensation uh, according to their body. Now, uh, basically, uh, estimated prevalence um, for autism is uh, uh, in 2008. Every time this number goes higher and higher, one in 59. It varies in uh, different places. Uh, if the state is the, or the country is industrial, if the country uh, has farms, the number is low. So it varies uh, from uh, place to place, the prevalence of autism. Now, with children, uh, more likely, uh, boys are uh, four times more likely to be identified with autism than girls. And autism is considered as a, a nickname, uh, boy syndrome. Um, here, like uh, changing in uh, autism spectrum, Basically, uh, according to this, uh, I'm not going to go in detail with it because this is psychology, uh, you know, but I'm going to like just give like uh, uh, some look in, into the idea. In DSM-3, uh, uh, autism uh, wa was under the... Um, was under like uh, childhood uh, onset of PBD, atypical autism. Then we have autistic disorder in DSM-4, and then like we have DSM-5, it become like um, the three levels. It's a spectrum, uh, level one, uh, level two, and level three. Level one requiring support, level uh, two requiring substantial support, and level three require so requiring very substantial support. 
And uh, as a therapist, we don't diagnose. Basically, like we have an idea what level the child will be, but this is the role of the uh, like uh, the psychiatrist, psychologist, and the primary uh, pediatrician, developmental pediatrician, or primary doctor. And um, we have uh, early sign of autism, uh, what to look from uh, six uh, to 12 months of old, uh, old the child, um, rarely smile when approached by caregiver, rarely try to imitate sound and movement, uh, other make babbling is delayed uh, or infrequent. Uh, maybe there's not happened this frequent. Doesn't use gesture or communicate by 10 months. Uh, poor eye contact, always fussy. Uh, rarely seek uh, your attention uh, uh, repeatedly when being touched, stealth and uh, in the hand and the leg. Uncommon posture, delay in motor development, including rolling. Uh, running over and crawling and walking. So this is uh, the, the delay in the the, uh, the developmental milestone of the child will give us some indication. But uh, at this age, there is no diagnosis. But this is like it'll give us like uh, some some hints about what the child probably gonna be uh, if you're gonna be under like. Uh, autism spectrum disorder, but the diagnosis starts from 18 months of age. Now, uh, autism, a person with autism may possess the following characteristic. Uh, they have certain features, okay? Uh, basically, apparently insensitive to pain, tolerate pain more, uh, no real fear of danger, very, the parent will tell you, oh, he doesn't, he's not afraid of anything, he jumped. Uh, inappropriate uh, laughing or giggling, he'd be sitting, daydreaming, or, uh, all of a sudden uh, he has inappropriate laughing out of, or repeated or repeat uh, TV shows uh, or talking to himself. Uh, may, uh, uh, like he always is spinning uh, object, uh, he get angry quickly, avoid eye contact, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, squeeze his, uh, his body, he has uh, abnormal uh, play behavior, inappropriate connection to object. Uh, echolalia, basically the echolalia is like, uh, say, how are you? We say, how are you? Where are you going? Where are you going? So he repeats stuff exactly. Uh, he has difficulty interacting with the others. He likes to spin object. And uh, he's uh, sensitive to sound, the loud sound close his ears. In, uh, some kids, they do like hand flapping, toe walking. Uh, they use their peripheral vision when they walk. They look uh, from their peripheral vision or they squeeze their body together. This is will uh, give like the seeking attention or grinding their teeth and licking object, the sniffing object. So all these are the symptoms of uh, uh, under the uh, uh, autism spectrum disorder, but the, the, for the parent to be clear about it, if the child is 18 months, he's delayed in speech, doing repetitive movement, uh, have difficulty in social interaction, okay? So this is uh, a very important step for the parent to go to the primary care. Primary care, hopefully, we give them the chat and uh, basically is a, a for toddler, uh, like a tool to see if the child gonna like you know uh, to send them to psychiatry for evaluation and to be if uh, he's under the spectrum or not. So like is an uh, as indication tool to help us to proper referral of the child to the uh, psychiatry and developmental uh, pediatrician. Now uh, we're gonna speak about sensory integration. Uh, Eighty percent of children under the spectrum. Uh, 80 to 80 percent, they have uh, sensory processing difficulties. Uh, sensory integration is defined as a neurological process that organizes sensation from one's own body, okay, uh, and the environment. Therefore, making it possible to use your body effectively within the environment. And this is by Jean Ayers. She was a psychologist and she was an occupational therapist in 1972. She uh, introduced the theory of sensory integration. 
Now, sensory integration dysfunction or sensory processing difficulties, they all under this uh, sensory integration theory. Basically, whatever we get from the environment through our five senses, and uh, basically we have seven senses, which include the proprioception and uh, uh, the like, um, the vestibular, uh, plus uh, the tactile, the olfactory, the visual, uh, the testing, the, the tasting, and the tactile. So these like seven senses that we have, that uh, our body. Uh, well, like get this uh, information from the environment and uh, our body react accordingly with a uh, motor movement. So our seven senses, olfactory, smell, visual, sight, proprioception, body awareness, auditory, hearing, tactile, touch, uh, gustatory, uh, taste, and vestibular, which is like the balance. So these are the seven senses that our body gets from the environment, whatever is in the environment in the form of sensation goes to our body and the, our body translate this through the brain and from the brain, the cerebral cortex go back with a motor movement based on that. If I touch something hot, I'm going, the minute I touch it, I have to remove my hand. Touching it is sensory, removing my hand is motor action. Uh, this uh, presentation in the cerebral uh, cortex, primary symmetry sensory cortex, and primary motor cortex. And this is uh, give us uh, example mirror image of in our uh, like in our brain in the primary symmetry sensory cortex uh, that the most area that has more uh, uh, sen sensation area in the sensory area and the motor area. If we look at the picture, we could see the hand and the arm and the trunk and the lower the lower extremity. And this is later on we're gonna indicate that area where we do our brushing technique uh, for the you know. So these area they have more sensation in the uh, in our brain uh, from sensory aspect and also from the motor aspect. And this sensation goes like, you know, different, like, you know, according to research, they say we have more, more than 50,000 receptors of our, in our body. We have uh, superficial receptors and deep receptors. So when we do like uh, our massage with a brush, uh, we work in like superficial and uh, massage deep uh, receptors. But we will talk about it later. And this picture indicate each sensation threshold of pain goes to different area of the brain through 13 pathways, okay? And uh, the, these, these pathways, like basically, if uh, like, uh, if you see here down, the, the flame on the feet goes to certain area, the cut goes also to, to certain area of the brain, but they all go to the symmetric sensory cortex. And uh, the same for like, the feather and the joint compression uh, and the proprioceptive uh, stimuli. So they go in a different area, but they all go to the motor uh, area of, of the brain. So the sensory integration treatment goal, what are the goals? We have as an occupational therapist, uh, just to add also like uh, the treatment does not depends only in occupational therapy, it depends in speech, ABA, psychology, psychiatry, and uh, uh, developmental uh, pediatrician. So the, the sensory integration treatment goal is more focused by the provided by occupational therapist. The goal of sensory integration is to, uh, is to facilitate the development of the nervous system ability to process the sensation input in more typical way through integration the brain pulled together sensory messages and form information upon which we react on. Uses neurosensory and neuromotor exercise to improve the brain ability to repair itself. And this is which is part of the sensory integration treatment. So for, for us, basically we stimulate this superficial and deep receptor through like exercises, through 
uh, techniques, which is brushing massage, deep pressure massage, vestibular stimulation through like a swing, all together, these seven senses, they have to act together, okay, to get like if, uh, from the, to get from the environment, sensory information, send it to the brain and the brain retain it as a motor action. Here, uh, sensor integration, uh, sensor integration treatment can improve attention. Okay, can improve concentration of the child, listening of the child, comprehension uh, of the orders that the child uh, need to comprehend, coordination. When we talk coordination, it could be fine motor coordination, gross motor coordination, and bilateral coordination and eye and hand coordination. So several. Uh, Impulsivity, lower the impulsivity of the child, decrease repetitive behavior, the hand the flapping, the biting, the smelling, uh, the, the toe walking, all these consider under uh, the repetitive behavior. So, as I mentioned before, uh, the treatment of children under the spectrum, it doesn't uh, goes under one person uh, is a uh, part of a team it consists of family medicine specialists, clinical psychologists, uh, pediatric psychiatry, occupational therapists, speech therapists, audiologists, special education teacher slash ABA. So this is the team that we, we need to be our uh, treatment successful. So sometimes when we work, the child will be referred by the primary physician, the developmental doctor or the pediatric psychiatry, and basically referred to the OT. And if the child has a lot of sensory issues, it's very uh, uh, excellent if the OT work with them to calm this uh, sensory problem for the child to be able to cooperate with the uh, speech and the ABA. So it's very important for the child to start with us, regulate his sensory system, and from there, we uh, like he, he could like uh, do uh, adjacent treatment, uh, speech, ABA, and uh, follow up with a pediatri uh, pediatrician, a developmental pediatrician. The M, the M chat uh, is like I mentioned before, is a tool, is a tool. Uh, if the uh, if the parent have concern, or if the primary physician uh, he got the child for vaccine and he noticed the child uh, something going on with the child, he will give it to the parent and the parents will fill it uh, that uh, the sheet will be scored quickly and basically like uh, has like a score and uh, the the score. Uh, uh, like give us indication if the child need uh, to be referred to right away to psychiatry or uh, developmental pediatrician uh, for further investigation. And uh, uh, I'm chat used for children from 16 months to 30 months. Now benefit uh, also the we have another tool for OT we use it's called B body developmental test is a standardized uh, test. Uh, measure both qualitative and the quantitative uh, aspect of growth and fine motor development in the child. It has five sub, uh, uh, six uh, subtests: reflexes, stationary locomotion, object manipulation, grasping, and visual motor stimulation. This uh, this test is uh, from birth to 72 months. It be given uh, calculated based on month age. And uh, for it's very important for us in OT, we use it for children under the spectrum, starting 18 months to like three years of age or five years of age. Okay, so and uh, this test focus on the grasping and coordination and bilateral coordination and focus also on the uh, visual motor integration, uh, visual scanning, tracking and uh, sequencing. We have another subtest, which has 17 subtests. It's called sensory integration practice, practice test. This is the technically focused mostly on the uh, ID or identify what sensory uh, issue that the child has. Is the child has 
uh, visual motor issues, tactile discrimination, vestibular, bilateral, or uh, any any uh, issue that uh, under the the sensor system. Okay, we could identify the weak area and we work on it. Now, uh, parent teacher checklist is another. Uh, uh, thing we use we can, if the child older than five years go to school age uh, before starting of the new year we present it to the teachers and also to the parents and basically uh, this checklist uh, the teacher would say oh he cannot sit he always fidgety he always like bite his shirt uh, he's always distracted laugh by himself uh, or goes on and on the list. And learning difficulty, if the child has any learning difficulty, posture, he is always like sitting in, in a kyphotic posture, uh, very, uh, very hyper, less hyper, uh, hand coordination, difficulty holding the pen and writing, uh, difficulty in visual aspect and visual perception. Uh, he cannot uh, dress himself. He has difficulty in buttoning the, the shirt or doing the shoelace. Uh, or doing basic uh, ADL stuff, activity of daily living stuff. Academic difficulties, which is has academic uh, academic uh, diff difficult uh, the child during school, that he has difficulty in schooling. Uh, the other the other issue is uh, for us as an occupational therapy, we have guidelines we work with, with the children and the, the spectrum. These guidelines. Uh, when it varies from one child to another. So I cannot like apply guidelines for X and Y. Uh, like uh, apply guidelines like, you know, like, uh, or goals to certain child, maybe now we're gonna work for another child, okay? And uh, basically then the, uh, also the intervention has to be as early as possible. When we say early as possible, it could be 16 months or 18 months until like 36 of uh, 36 months of age. This is the best age we could like uh, uh, make changes in, in the child. Sometimes we get five or six years of age, we could do changes, but at that time, the child, he already has behavioral issue. He already have certain way doing stuff. He already have uh, his own personality doing stuff. So it's become become more difficult to uh, succeed and do these goals with the child, and also based on case to case, uh, to case differently. Uh, so, like intervention to be intensive, at least one to or twice uh, per week. The family engagement is very important, and education always, always, from the first session to second session to the last session, we have to do family education for the parent. Parent. Education is an important uh, point. Uh, therapists to be highly trained and specialized. Somebody you want to work with a child under the spectrum, he have to be patient, he have to have the experience, he have to know when to push in, when he pull out. He have there is a lot of factors uh, plays when you work with a child and plus uh, with the parents. You have you have to have the experience to to deal with this issue to help the child. And also the intervention to be carefully planned, have a plan to the intervention, what we're doing with the child and why we're doing to the child. And we say, and it should be research based. And if it doesn't work this plan, we always can change the plan. Now uh, we have strategies. We use different strategies in occupational therapy to help the child to respond better to his or her environment by improving the following area, improving eye contact and eye and hand coordination, improving bilateral coordination of both upper extremities, encouraging pointing and requesting his needs, improving functional play skills, improving ADL activity of daily living, decreased self-stimulation repetitive behavior, coping with the transition from one station to another station, reduce distraction by focusing and keep focusing on task, improve speech and social interaction. Now, when we do like uh, treatment, we use uh, some technique called the brushing technique. Basically, we remember that picture, which has, the, I said, the most uh, 
uh, area of the palm of the hand and the arms and the legs. So when we do a brushing technique, we do first uh, uh, bottom of the feet, okay? And then the leg itself from the hip all the way down, follow muscle fiber, how it goes down. And then uh, we do the palm of the hand and the hand from this side and this side with the brush, white brush, and we do it with the, with the brush and basically to stimulate the lighter receptor that directly under the skin. The deep massager, we do it to stimulate the proprioceptive uh, receptors that existed. If you hit your elbow, you feel like electricity that existed in the joints, okay, and the deep muscles. So we use the electric massager to serve the, we do it in a certain way to stimulate these deep receptors. We could do like stimulating these deep receptor by jumping and trampoline. Uh, we could do it by jumping from a certain small height, okay, with a child. And basically we do these trampoline and jumping in small height uh, during, uh, uh, before, before like we're doing any uh, writing or coloring or like activity that need focusing. Uh, the other issue we, we work with the child is we work on uh, function and play. Function and play gonna be one-to-one. -one. If the child has poor eye contact, I will come to him, say, Muhammad, look at me, look at me, up, 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 in that fashion. The other one, like, you know, I could come do like tunnel vision, but I don't touch his face. I say, Muhammad, like this, and uh, you give like one order. Muhammad, we wanna eat. Muhammad, we wanna uh, put the clothes on. So this is like another way. Or you get an object and you stimulate the extensor muscle of the child and uh, grab his hand and uh, stick his hand in that fashion and the point, pen, pen, Muhammad wants pen, pen. In that fashion, uh, we're doing several things. First, we're stimulating the extensor muscle for the hand to ready to go and the wrist to go in extension and the child to grab stuff. This is one thing. The other issue is pointing. The other issue is like um, we're doing it with the child facing us to increase the eye level, okay? And uh, the, this like technique, we use it to improve also pointing for the child. So all, all these aspects, we, we're targeting uh, several things uh, like eye contact, eye and hand coordination, bilateral coordination, uh visual tracking so in our activity we always have to keep these in mind why we doing this activity i could divide this activity to this thing i have to i, I could do this thing with the child if the child he needed also like uh, we do like functional play it's very important uh we try like to do a 20 second rule with the child if the child hit i put my hand over his hand and put i apply proprioceptive uh, input in his hand to say no in, in that fashion and like you know he would do it again then I put my back in my hand back in I would say no and hold like 10 seconds or 20 seconds basically one two three in that fashion and this way we allow the child or if it's the child do hand flapping or like doing abnormal like uh, uh, repetitive behavior we try to put our hands on for the child not to uh, not to repeat it. We work on uh, gross motor activity like jumping, hopping, rolling, uh, and also we work on handwriting skills, which is is like later on we work with the child like coloring, uh, ability to hold the pencil in right way and holding the hand in right way and sitting properly in the right way. So working finally. Working with the children under the spectrum, uh, the, when we work with them, we have to be patient, supportive uh, to the child and his parents. Uh, we have to be uh, communicate with other team members as speech, ABA, or uh, psychiatry, psychology, primary doctor, or pediatrician. All these we work together to be successful with the child because the issue of treating children under the spectrum is not depending on an OT, but it depends in a, in a whole team. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day.